This is the shape of a football field. This is the shape of a basketball court. Tennis. Hockey. Soccer. But what is the shape of a baseball field? The answer is not as simple as you think. So, quick question. Why do ballparks have different dimensions? When baseball first started to be played, it was in the country. It was in a park-like environment. There was no requirement that you have an outfield wall. With no wall, a fielder had to chase the ball down no matter how far it was hit. As baseball grew in popularity, it made its way into America's rapidly expanding cities. The outfield wall was invented for the same reason as many great American ideas to make money. William Kammeyer was the owner of the Union Skating Grounds, and he got the brilliant idea that with the spring thaw, he could put fencing around the park and charge admission. The home run was born, and baseball would never be the same. The game exploded in popularity, and new ballparks popped up in cities all over the country, with no two fields having the same dimensions. A ballpark called Lakefront Park it was 180 feet down the left field line and 190 feet down the right field line. So home runs were plentiful. The league recognized this as a huge problem. So, in 1884, they mandated a 250-foot minimum down the foul lines. The era of hastily improvised ballparks would come to a fiery end. In 1894, ballparks were still wooden structures. There was a terrible fire in the middle of a ball game between Boston and Baltimore. Thankfully, all the players and fans made it out safe. But Boston's South End grounds were completely destroyed and out of the ashes rose one of baseball's greatest treasures, Fenway Park. Boston needed a more permanent and less flammable home. They found a spot in the middle of a busy neighborhood, sandwiched between Lansdowne Street and Jersey Street. The new ballpark would have to squeeze into the admittedly odd dimensions. Fenway Park is like an emerald, its jagged walls rising from the tide of perfectly manicured grass the border of its playing field jutting in and out to create what many have described as a jigsaw puzzle effect. Penned in by a used car lot in left field, they built the outfield wall 37 feet high to stop home runs from damaging the merchandise. This legendary feature became known as the Green Monster. The right field wall was only five feet high, but it was really far. Nobody hit the ball out to right field. Right field was off in another territory, which was one of the reasons why Babe Ruth was glad to leave Fenway. This was the pinnacle of what became known as the drill box design. As more permanent ballparks were built in cities, they each faced their own unique design challenges, and things got even weirder. Here's the pitch to work. There's a long drive to center field base, back to the wall. You've likely seen this Willie Mays catch. It's pretty famous. What you probably didn't know was that the polo grounds was a giant rectangle. This catch in center field was hit about 460 feet. Here's what that would look like in a modern park. And it's hit well to center. That ball is gone into the fountain. But nobody pushed the envelope more than Indians owner Bill Vec. Yeah, Bill Veck was famous for stretching the rules. In 1947, Veck would change the distance of the outfield walls depending on who they were playing. Part of the lure of the suburb is in the greater elbow room. It all in the 1950s, Americans flocked to the suburbs and they took their ballparks with them. The all-weather domed stadium, a multi-sports center, is just about ready. No rained-out ball games on baseball's newest and perhaps greatest stage. The Astros didn't have that stage to themselves. They had to share it with the Houston Oilers. Across the country, many of the old jewel box ballparks and their quirky dimensions were replaced with state-of-the-art multi-use stadiums. 
The Kingdom in Seattle, downtown Cincinnati. The Veterans Stadium. St. Louis Bush Stadium. Atlanta, Georgia. The uh, Concrete Donut Multi-Use Stadium has been referred to also as the Concrete Ashtray, which is a metaphor I prefer. Because they were designed to be suited to two sports, they were suited for neither. There are only so many ways a baseball and football field can fit on top of each other. Before long, field dimensions became pretty uniform. All the quirky dimensions and weird signature features, gone. A certain flavor was lost. That all changed on opening day, 1992. Baltimore's Memorial Stadium was a multi-use concrete donut built in the 1940s. By the 80s, it was in terrible condition. The Orioles needed a new home. The job of designing a new stadium fell to Janet Marie Smith and Orioles president, Larry Lucchino. Initially, the state of Maryland assumed that it would be a multi-purpose stadium because they had two teams, but by the time they had the funding available, the Colts are gone. Camden Yards would be a baseball-only ballpark. Baltimore's downtown core was experiencing a renaissance. It only made sense to put the ballpark there. We wanted Camden Yards to be a place that felt familiar but gave you something to talk about, just as you might bring grandmother's pictures and put them on the wall or something. The HOK Sport, who were the architects for this, just so fully embraced this idea that we could take the older ballparks and we could give them a new vocabulary. Janet's design for Camden blended the quirkiness of old stadiums with the amenities of a modern ballpark. Its most iconic feature is the red brick industrial warehouse on Utah Street. Instead of erasing this link to the past, Janet turned the warehouse into the team's front office. It also became an alluring target for power hitters. To this day, Ken Griffey Jr. is the only player to hit one off the warehouse. Holy cow, that may have hit the warehouse and they announce it to it. <laughs> Homages to Jewel Box Parks are everywhere the analog clock above the scoreboard, the stacked bullpens, and most importantly, the shape of the outfield walls. Multi-use ballparks had rounded outfield walls. They were ashtrays, remember? Camden Yards became the first stadium since Ebbets Field in 1913 to have only straight outfield walls. Quirky outfield dimensions were back. Camden Yards was a breath of fresh air by being a breath of stale air. It was old, it was new, it was perfect. I don't know that we really thought back in 1989 that it would set off a wave that would change Major League Baseball as a whole. We were just, as Larry Lucchino is fond of saying, looking to do a nice ballpark for the city of Baltimore. Retro ballparks swept the country, and today, no two parks have the same dimensions. That's, of course, what makes baseball special, is it's the building it plays in is very different and is thought of very differently than most sports fans think of the home where their team plays. Each embraces its own quirky footprint, bringing the charm back to the game. <laughs>